Hello once again, and if you don't know already, I'm Scott Florence, and I'm actually surprised I managed to get a video out today. But anyway, this is part two of my videos about particle wave duality, so if you haven't yet seen part one, which was me talking about particles as waves, then just click here, and that'll open in a new window or tab. But now I'm going to be talking about waves acting as particles, and primarily talking about the photoelectric effect. But let's start off talking about light, because we tend to think of light as a wave. For one, we tend to call light an electromagnetic wave, or a light wave, or anything along those lines. For another reason, we tend to describe light using words like the frequency, the amplitude, and the wavelength of light. And using either the wavelength or frequency, we distinguish between different types of light. For example, x-rays have shorter wavelengths than radio waves, which have really long wavelengths. And it's not only the way that we think of light that makes it seem like a wave, it's the fact that it can do things like diffraction and refraction. But now we're going to talk about the photoelectric effect, which is some evidence for light behaving as a particle rather than a wave. And we know about the photoelectric effect thanks to Max Planck and Einstein. Einstein built upon Max Planck's work, so we're going to start off with Max Planck and work our way onto Einstein. Max Planck was working on black body radiation in the early 20th century and he was looking at the wavelength of light or radiation that was emitted from an object depending on its temperature. And while he was working on this, he came up with a model, and this model explained it very well. But in order for this model to apply, light shouldn't behave as a wave, it should be quantized, basically saying that it would come in packets of energy rather than just a continuous wave. And the way that he put this into his equations was he said that the energy of these packets of light was directly proportional to the frequency and he had his own constant that converted one to the other and that constant is now called Planck's constant and Planck's constant had a value of 6.6261 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds and when he came up with this really what he thought he was doing was just playing with the maths in order for it to fit the model he didn't think that this was an actual reality he just thought it was the way that he could make it work for his own convenience now, while Einstein was looking over this work of Max Planck's, it was Einstein that proposed that light was actually delivered in these quantized packets, which are called photons. And in the event that light is delivered as these photons, the amplitude is merely dependent on the number of photons that are being sent off at any one time, not the energy of the wave. Now, in order to understand the photoelectric effect, you need to know that atoms or electrons can only exist in specific energy levels. And those are the sort of things that you can see in blue up there. The bottom line is called the ground state, and that's the minimum energy that a electron can be at. And then each line up is an increased energy level until you reach the top, where it's a continuum state, where the electron can gain or lose any energy or photon. But in between those lines are energies that the electrons cannot exist at. And the amount of energy that the electron can exist at depends on the atom that it's a part of. But say that the electron was given enough energy to get just above one of the energy levels. That photon would not be absorbed by the electron because it cannot exist just a bit more, just a bit less, or anywhere in between the specific energy levels that it can live at. It must get that precise amount of energy to increase an energy level, no more, no less. But if the electron gains enough energy to go up into the continuum state, that means that the atom that it's connected into has been ionized. The electron has enough energy to fly off from the atom. And because this occurs in the continuum state, the electron can gain for example, an extremely high-powered X-ray that would get it high above the start of the continuum state and it would still absorb that photon and it would be released. And the extra energy that it was given would just go towards its kinetic energy rather than making it exist in a higher energy level. Basically, what the photoelectric effect is is what happens when light is shined onto a metal surface. Now, if the light has a short enough wavelength, when the light hits the surface of the metal, electrons will be released, which could be used to create a current through a circuit, but we're just looking at how this happens. Now, if light was a wave, you would just need to put a bright enough light onto this surface and electrons will be released, even if this light is of a relatively low frequency. If there was enough of this light, that means that the electrons will be released. But what we find is however much light we put onto this metal surface, if this light is of a too long wavelength, meaning that it doesn't have enough energy as each of the photons, then that means that no electrons will be released. But if the wavelength of the light is short enough, 
then there will be electrons being released, even if the light is extremely dim compared to the previous longer wavelength light. And the reason for that is because of light and its particle-like nature. As light is absorbed as photons and then re-emitted practically instantly after it's absorbed, that means that you must have a very short wavelength in order to reach the continuum, even if you throw a billion times more of the lower energy photons at this same atom, it will not release an electron because at any one instant it's not gaining enough energy. And I mentioned before that once you reach the continuum state, any amount of photons can be absorbed and emitted after that. Well, the energy of the continuum state is set to be zero joules or zero electron volts and the lower levels, for example, for hydrogen, the ground state is at negative 13.60 electron volts and additional energy into the continuum state goes to be the kinetic energy and the way that you work out the kinetic energy is the energy of the photon or more specifically Planck's constant times the frequency minus Planck's constant times the threshold frequency and the threshold frequency is the minimum amount of energy that's required in order to reach the bottom of the continuum state or rather to reach zero electron volts. That's all for now and thanks for watching. I was surprised to get this video out today but I did all the editing and recording last night in order to remain consistent. But if you think I've deserved it or would like to see more of this, please do leave a like and remember to subscribe and I will see you next time. I'm fairly sure when it's a, at a continuum that's the ionization occurring. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, I'm right. I've had to wait until the stars were out before I could even put this suit on. It's been so hot in the UK. Now following along that, for the... But now following along that, the... And I do really need to work out something to put at the end of this rather than the bloopers because they're just getting a bit sameish now in my opinion. And the extra energy that... And the extra... En yeah, that's better, isn't it? But say that the electron was given enough energy to just get... But say that the electron was given a... But say that the electron was... For crying out loud. But say that the electron was given enough energy to get just above the first line. Or the first energy state, rather. Second energy state, then. But say that the electron was given enough energy to just... And it... Dip, and it varies. And the position of the... And the amount of... And it's about 6.626, perhaps? Yeah. And using either the wavelength or the... Th and using either the wavelength or... Th fr wavelength or frequency. In almost all of my videos, I've been using natural light in order to light this place because everything looks sort of yellowish while it's like... While it's got indoor lighting and it just doesn't look right. The bottom line is the base... No ground state. Ah, uh, windows must close, it's too loud outside. How uh, many windows are open? But it's so hot. Right, uh, what are we starting with?